Hi, everybody. I'm Greg Fischel, and welcome to bonus weather video number one for this week. And we're going to be talking about something called the diurnal pressure cycle. It turns out that there's a normal cycle up and down of air pressure during any 24-hour period. And so we can sort of look at that and tell some things about what's going on in the atmosphere outside of that that could be very significant. So as Billy Joel once said, pressure. <laughs> no, I'm dating myself there, but uh, for those of you that are old like me, you remember that one. All right. So when the sun comes up in the morning, or more appropriately, the earth rotates underneath it, it heats some of the gases in the upper atmosphere. And by upper atmosphere, in this case, I mean above the troposphere where most of the weather occurs, stratosphere, thermosphere, up in those areas. And once it does begin to heat those gases, it sets up what we call an atmospheric tide, much like the tides we observe with the ocean, where they come in, they go out, they come in, they go out. And so the same thing is going on here, and that affects the overall pressure over any one given spot. So what's the end result of all this? Well, the wave pattern is what we call semi-diurnal, meaning there are two peaks and two valleys per day, okay? The peaks occur around 11 a.m. and 11 p.m., and I've adjusted for daylight saving time here. Ne normally it's 10 and 4, but since we're on DST now, you have to adjust for that. The valleys occur around 5 a.m. and 5 p.m., so all of the things being equal, the pressure is going to go up from 5 a.m. to 11 a.m., go down again from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m., back up again 5 p.m. to 11 p.m., and back down again 11 p.m. to 5 a.m., okay? That's assuming that there are no major weather systems influencing the pressure pattern. Now, I was taught, this is many, many years ago, so things can change, that there was a dominant peak and a dominant valley at 11 a.m. and 5 p.m. I could not find anything online today to support that notion. So uh, I'll continue to look at that, but that's something I was taught at Penn State a long time ago. So just because the pressure is falling during the afternoon does not mean that a storm is coming. A lot of these home barometers, and I have one, where it'll say, oh, if it falls to this value, it's going to be stormy, or if it's falling at all, it's going to be stormy. Not necessarily, okay? because the pressure always falls in the afternoon, even if there's no weather systems around. And so with that in mind, if you see it falling a little bit in the afternoon or rising a little bit in the evening, that might not necessarily be a big deal. Now, the amplitude of this wave pattern is greatest at the equator and least at the poles. So you're going to notice more of a pressure change every six hours down toward the equator or just farther south across the U.S. than you will farther north. Now, one thing that you do want to look for if, you're, if you really want to geek out on this, watch for times when the pressure is changing in a direction that is opposite to the normal diurnal trend. For instance, if at 3 or 4 in the afternoon the pressure is rising like crazy and it normally, due to this cycle, would fall, that's telling you one of two things. Either there's a big high moving in or a big low moving out, okay? By the same token, if you see the pressure falling rapidly between 5 p.m. and 11 p.m. at a time when this cycle would make it go up, then that's telling you that, hey, there's something going on here, okay? And so we probably got a pretty big storm uh, or some low pressure area that is moving in our direction. So when the pressure is changing in a, in a way that is opposite to what the diurnal trend would suggest, then that is significant. That tells you that there's a weather system either leaving you or approaching you. Okay, <clears throat> so this is a graph of the actual air pressure at RDU over the last, well, not the last 72 hours. It actually went from 7 p.m. Saturday night to 7 p.m. tonight. And for those of you that don't know, all of the pressure readings all over the world have to be standardized at sea level, okay? If we didn't do that, then all the lows would be over the mountains and all the highs would be over the ocean. Well, we don't want a topographic map of the world. We want a weather map, right? And so there are interpolation schemes that are performed at every station that is above sea level. And depending on how much it's above sea level, then the pressure observation is adjusted so that we're looking at a level playing field. And that way we can tell where the weather systems are. So going with my idea of there being a peak valley at 5 in the afternoon, boy, that one on Sunday lines up really, really nicely, doesn't it? Right at the bottom of the graph. 
And then the one on Monday afternoon, the bottoming out occurs just a little bit later than 5 p.m. And again, anything that's going on in the atmosphere that is in addition to this diurnal cycle is going to alter the graph. So the fact that it bottoms out a couple of hours later than 5 p.m. is really nothing all that terribly significant. And then today, it still wasn't done bottoming out because uh, we have a much warmer air mass moving in and so usually that is associated with lower pressures but you can certainly see that it's you know falling and uh, perhaps beginning to level out a little bit at five o'clock now if we put the other minimums in there 5 p.m on sunday you can see in general it's bottoming out around that time uh, a little bit before that time on monday and just a little bit after that time on tuesday and then let's take a look at the peaks okay 11 a.m. Sunday, when it's supposed to peak out, that lines up pretty nicely. Uh, that one there as well, although it's sort of a broad peak. And then the peak here occurring a little bit before 11 a.m. on Tuesday. The secondary peak, you can see that little bump in the graph right there. Same thing here and same thing here, okay? So obviously over the last three days, uh, well, at least the last two, there really hasn't been a whole lot going on. Now on Saturday, we were in that really, you know, uh, cold, drizzly, rainy pattern. And uh, so the pressures were altered by that system a little bit. But that really wasn't associated with what you would call a, an intense storm, okay? It was a process going on in the atmosphere that led to the rain and drizzle and the cold temperatures. But it really wasn't because of a low that was incredibly intense. So in these kinds of patterns where there isn't a whole lot going on, then things are going to line up very nicely like they do here. Uh, again, if you had some major storm approaching you at just the wrong time, uh, then it could alter all of this. And, uh, and, and that's when you can tell, uh, again, when, there, when there's something significant going on, when the actual pressure observations are contrary to what this cycle would suggest. All right, I hope you found that interesting. That is bonus weather video number one for today or this week. Uh, we'll have another one coming up on Friday and, of course, another daily weather update coming up tomorrow afternoon. So you all take care and... Uh, don't worry about the pressure being on. It's not. Just relax. <laughs> Take care, everybody.